friends i am dr amdekar in this video i am going to discuss specifically early diagnosis of infection triggered immune responses in the previous video dr chokhani did discuss about the early diagnosis of autoimmune disorders friends we all know that the job of an immune system is to recognize self from non self and whenever there is an intruder the immune system takes charge of it to eliminate it however if the immune system fails to recognize self from non self then either it results into immune deficiency with recurrent infections or this self is not recognized and therefore attacked and results into a malignancy however there is another kind of response which is autoimmunity which is hyper responsive immune response now what does this mean the infection starts and an immune system knows that there is an intruder recognizes the antigen gets all the soldiers on to the job and eliminate the intruder however while doing that sometimes there is a dysregulated immune response which unnecessarily attacks the body's own tissue itself and that is what is referred to as autoimmunity in this video i am going to specifically give you a wide spectrum of such hyper responsiveness of the immune system to various infections well the initial response is important to eliminate the infection however that increased hyper reactive response unnecessarily causes a damage many viral infections could do that but also bacterial infection also may do the same of course when we are talking about general autoimmunity as dr chukani discussed in the previous video it could occur even sometimes without an obvious trigger or the triggers could be many non infective elements we all have recognized how a dengue fever while getting better suddenly comes out with a hyper reactive immune response that leads to capillary leak and even shock and a probable death this is easy to recognize because it happens within a day or two after a recovering infection is seen and at times it may even overlap the fever of infection itself like what happens in leptospirosis where you have fever initially due to infection but the fever continues longer with some more damage to different organs and then we understand that this hyper reactive immune response has overlapped the initial fever caused by the infection itself and there is no clear differential line between an infection getting better and an hyper reactive immune response coming up so naturally the immune responses of this kind may appear within few days as i explained or sometimes as we know very well it might take a week or even two weeks before such hyper reactive response arises and as we know very well that happens in a disease like rheumatic fever for example where good two weeks after a streptococcal infection has died out completely you start getting an acute rheumatic fever however this kind of hyper reactive responses may even occur months or years after the infection has completely disappeared friend this is the time we start discussing why does this happen at all now every hyper reactive response is really due to a molecular mimicry which means that the infecting organism 
is already eliminated, but some part of the body or some particular tissue looks like that antigen or that infective agent and therefore immune system is totally deceived by this kind of molecular mimicry and keeps on destroying its own tissue. This is the common way the autoimmune responses to fever occur. But there could be other mechanisms as well like an epitope spreading which means different parts of the virus itself can initiate a hyperreactive immune response even when the virus is almost dying. And lastly, even a damaged tissue itself can also result into hyperreactive response. Therefore, one is not clear why and how this could occur in any patient. And of course, there is some genetic background, but as a clinician, we fail to understand which simple viral infection, which almost gets better by itself, continues to provide hyperreactive responses well beyond few days, weeks or even months. And I think this is a clinical challenge that we know many times a disease like tuberculosis comes out with a delayed hypersensitivity reaction and you have multiple immune mediated complications not just because the organism is multiplying and causing disease but also the immune system is reacting and therefore you have a vasculitis in tuberculosis and the result of uh, multiple areas of brain damage. When you look at all such hyperreactive responses therefore, how does a clinician respond to this probability of fever triggered autoimmune responses? I already said that it could occur within a week or two or within a few days which is not very difficult to make out. But when it occurs even months or years after the infection has completely died out and you have come out of the self-limiting infection very, very successfully, how does the clinician anticipate this to happen? And that's what exactly it means, early diagnosis of fever-triggered hyperreactive immune response. Lately, in COVID-19 epidemic, we have realized how the hyperreactive responses may occur long after several months or years sometimes. And we have seen a myocardial damage occurring 6-8 months after the COVID-19 virus has completely successfully eliminated. And we don't know why this happened at all. A clinician cannot anticipate this, but must be kind of on the watch whether such a response that comes months or even later, could it be related to something that he has suffered say few months ago or sometimes even a year ago. You will not know that a measles virus infection often clears by itself, but the dormant virus may remain somewhere in the central nervous system, in the spinal cord, and for years, and suddenly reactivates. And then you develop what's known as an SSPE. We all know this kind of a subacute sclerosing panencephalitis as a complication of a hyperreactive immune response due to measles virus that a child may have suffered years back and still develop some complications far later. The question is, does the clinician know which patient would land up with such long-term hyperreactive responses triggered by some infection? And the answer is no, because besides genetic susceptibility, a genetic background, there could be a latent virus somewhere lurking around in the tissue in the body. But there is another probability that for unknown reason, there is a reprogramming 
of an immune response occurring, which years after can suddenly develop into such hyperreactive fever-triggered infection-triggered responses. The point to discuss such a problem really in terms of early diagnosis is if you are faced with a sudden episode of some organ involvement to which you have no idea what started off and obviously you feel it's not an infection doing it, then you need to kind of inquire whether any particular type of infection that the patient may have suffered months or sometimes even years and therefore a past history of a probable similar infection is very very important but there could be many viruses it all depends on what type of virus you suffered from what was the viral load and whether there were any epigenetic factors or a genetic susceptibility that made you react with this. Friends, the idea of discussing this early diagnosis of fever triggered or infection triggered hyperreactive response is we need to be alert and we need to suspect when the etiology of a sudden syndrome occurring is not clear, we need to go back and find out whether it is anyway related to a known pattern of some of the viruses that can do it. Well, luckily, not many viruses can do it. And further, fortunately, not many of us are likely to develop such hyperactive responses. But those of few who do develop, as a clinician, you need to keep that in mind and take an appropriate action. It could be immune suppression, whatever but early diagnosis becomes very, very important. I hope this message is clear to you. You continue to join with us. Thank you very much.